yeah. 15 fucking days. But uh, uh, we well, we took a week off, and um, due to uh, man, I am I am in a new Adobe, a new home. Um, as I moved, that's right. Over the last couple of weeks, and uh, it feels weird. I don't know why. I you know I guess it was in the other house for seven years, and and uh, still got to get used to it, man. It's a new pair of know, shoes. It's crazy, man, because. We didn't. I didn't start the podcast in the other house. I actually started it when we were still in the uh, apartments, and uh, so it's to think that the podcast has been going that long, man. But we did. We did a lot of shows in the other house, and uh, and we haven't done in person shows lately because of a uh, well, you know, it's just easier to do it online nowadays, and and all the COVID restrictions and stuff. But uh, we've done a few live shows and uh, or in person shows, but. Uh, we do it all online, so it's weird doing it on a, in a different house. Now this house is a little uh, echoey; it feels like. Um, so, you know, but we uh, we'll 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 make it anew, so to speak. Um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna work. New beginning. It's gonna be great. And uh, I want to, man. I want to. Uh, I want to talk. I want to do a live show again. I need to talk to Daniel over at Misfit Toys and uh, see about doing that. I always really like those shows. I, it's funny because I'm a pretty introverted and uh, I don't really like to speak in front of people and, and I like to speak with my friends and, and that's why I do the podcast with, with you and with, when Long comes on the show, my my best buds. But generally, I'm not really uh, one to speak in public, but but for some reason when it comes to the live shows, I usually can uh, get up for it and do it and, and have a good time. And, uh, and Daniel and the guys at Misfit Toys are always very welcoming, so I need to talk to Daniel soon and see about that. Uh, Maybe doing another live show. It's always a good time over there, man. Yeah, especially yeah. if you you go there, you, you can we can talk about what we see, what what kind of new toys Daniel got in, and you know he's he's super knowledgeable about about that kind of merchandise, and you know it's fun bringing that to the show. You know, bring, bringing yeah. that toy, the toy aspect. And he uh, he loves horror and horror toys and horror films and. He always the last live show I think we did before COVID was one of our Halloween horror sh- episodes. I think it was the uh, Army of Darkness, possibly. I think it might be the last That's one right. we did over there. Army and of he, Darkness. He, he loves horror, and, and this is um, I got a little tangent, but this is our Halloween horrors month. We usually do four or five movies. Um, it looks like this year it might be, only be three, um, unless me and Matt pull something out of our collective butts and get a, a fourth episode done, a special release kind of thing. Well, we'll see how the next couple of weeks go. Yeah. Um, but for now, Halloween Horrors kickoff is today on the Rebel Radio Podcast. And this is, of course, Mark and Matt there across from me as we uh, just kind of talk there. So we already kind of, uh, you know who we are. You know who we are. Uh-huh. You know why we're here. Yeah. I'm the one with the sexy voice. And Matt's the one that sounds like a little kid sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little boy. <laughs> and, uh, oh. and, and when Long is on the show, he's the very serious, stoic, yep. informative he- voice of the show. And, That's uh, right. And long, if you're listening, man, we uh, we love you, dude. We just gotta bust your balls a little bit, you know. Just that's a little do, bit. That's how we do things on the Rebel Radio podcast. Yeah, you know, but it's only ever... like turned up to a four or a five with long. You know, whenever yeah. we mention Frank, it's like an eight or a nine. It's like an eight or a ten. I mean, any any yeah. guest of the show in some way has always got their balls busted a little bit on the show. It's just part of our guest or former co-host or host or whatever. Oh yeah, um, we're gonna give them a little ball busting. It's how we make you feel welcome here. But you know, we um. Man, we're, you know, we the week off kind of rejuvenated a little bit. We're gonna we're looking at some things to reformat the show a little bit. Not not as far as not we're still gonna do retrospectives of movies. We're just gonna bring some new stuff to the table in twenty twenty three. And uh, but in between now and then, we've got we we truly have some epic films coming up. We we mapped out the rest of the year, and uh, we think that you guys are really gonna like some of the films we're doing. Uh, I'm excited for some of them. I mean, oh yeah. There's some really good stuff coming up. So, uh, but we're kicking off Halloween horrors today, talking a, a, a pretty good horror film, um, which we'll get to in just a little bit. But let's uh, kick off the show with Download This, where we tell people what we uh, watched, streamed, checked out the last few weeks. Um, I uh, I got to think about this for a minute because I, my viewing habits have been sporadic with the move the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to let Matt get started on this and what he watched and saw the last couple of weeks. Yeah, watched a couple things, um, you know, because I, I, I've slacked a little bit. But uh, in the past two weeks, um, I watched a Kevin Smith movie and had forgotten it was a Kevin Smith movie. The wife wanted to watch a chick flick, so she chose Jersey Girl. Oh, I'm and sorry. I've never seen, yeah, I've never seen Jersey Girl. 
it's, and it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Um, I was surprised to see George Carlin in there as the as the good father. He's probably you know? the best in the movie. Yeah, he, yeah, he's the best guy in the movie. You got Jason Biggs in there. Uh, you've got J Lo. You know, J Lo is always cool to see, but she's you know she's in a more dramatic kind of role. Um, it's not a, it's obviously not as good as Chasing Amy. That's the better chick flick that uh, that Kevin Smith did. But you know, it was it was cool that I watched it. You know, I was yeah. like, oh yeah. You know, I remember watch, it being yeah. I remember it being promoted, um, and I remember there being a lot of buzz about it. Ben Ben Affleck, whenever it came out, he was talking a lot about it, trying to get get uh, get it promoted on like every other uh, commercial I saw. It felt like and oh, I got to see it. It's okay. Um, you know, not my favorite Kevin Smith movie, uh, yeah. but you know, it's cool to watch. Uh, Secondly, um, I uh, you, just this uh, uh, this past just, just this past day uh, evening, I watched. Uh, I went to the movie theaters and saw Halloween Ends. Um, you know, our our friend, friends of the show, uh, Erica and uh, Justin Corbett, uh, they uh, they gave it a C plus. Um, I I feel like it's maybe about that. There's definitely some some lacking, some stuff lacking. Uh, from the movie uh, there's a lack of michael myers presence he's in it obviously but it's like uh it's like diet michael myers so you know if you go there and and you're looking for mike myers to go ape shit crazy like he did in in uh uh ho- you know halloween kills or you know the previous one uh it's not going to be like that you, you know you do have some cool death scenes uh that's cool they just want a, a different route than i thought they would um, I saw it in 4DX. This is the first 4DX film uh, that I saw, and I have to say it was about what I would expect. Um, it's it was kind of a little distracting for me. I don't know. Maybe other people have a better experiences with it. I, I think if I was watching Top Gun Maverick, it would have been cooler because the seats move, and it probably you know if you're watching a movie like that or a race car movie, you know probably feel like you're in the driver's seat. Um, but it's like you watch a horror movie; they try and make make the seats move for odd reasons. It's like the guy's driving a, a motorcycle and it wants you to, to, you know, go left and right. I'm like, the guy's, it's going straight on the road. And this is some of the stuff I didn't get how they were trying to time these movements. See, I'm not really, I'm not really into the gimmicks at the movies. Like even the 3d stuff wasn't that big a deal to me when it was a big thing, you know, I'm like, I don't know, yeah, it's just me. I, th- I think three, I would be more likely to see a 3d movie than a 40 movie again. Um, but like you said, Mark, uh, 3D, you know, 4D, take it or leave it. Uh, I, you know, if you, you know, you go to the XD movie at Cinemark, you go to the uh, IMAX movie, you know, you you be, you go to the stuff that beefs up the sound, the picture quality. That stuff makes sense to me. Um, the stuff where, oh, man, it's in your face, you know, a 3D. Yeah, take, I'll take it or leave it. Um, and then, you know, the 4DX you know, it felt like I was in a, on a mini roller coaster ride. And, uh, I felt like, you know, at times, you know, maybe I couldn't really focus on the movie because I'm just like, man, it was my drink like shaking, you know, as it getting, as the carbonation and my soda getting all jumbled up, you know, and then there's like little, a spout that, that is at the back of your seat and it shoots up, uh, water. Like if there's blood splatter, oh, so it's like, I'm just like, whoa. You know, what's this water doing yeah, on me? Yeah, you know? popcorn wet. What the fuck? It, exactly. You know, uh, you know, I didn't have popcorn this time, but it's like if I had an open drink or something, you know, like you yeah. said, it, it, you know, the kind of kind of stuff in there that that would irk me, um, you know, under under other circumstances. But uh, it was, I guess, a, a cool experience just to say, uh, hey, I did it. You know, um, but decent decent movie. I think it's a better you know, you probably just get just as good of an experience watching it at home on Peacock, uh, depending on your, your, your picture setup and your audio. Um, if you want a theater experience, you know, you, you can definitely see this movie in theaters. I think it's worth, it's, it's definitely worth the watch. So you want to spend the money, uh, go spend it. Um, I don't think Halloween has ended. I think it's going to keep going. Uh, cause why not? You know, Mike, Mike Myers makes money, you know? Maybe this time actually make the killer Mike Myers. It'd be, yeah, baby, you're dead. Ah, gah, ah, you know, but uh, other than that, I'm trying to trying to think of a, uh, oh, uh, yeah, saw uh, 
untraceable. Uh, it's uh, it's a throwaway cop thriller movie, torture movie. It's a it's another horror film. Uh, it's okay. Uh, not not much to elaborate on. Um, and uh, played a lot of Destiny. I got a new TV. Uh, went ahead and got an 85 inch because I got a really good deal on it, and uh, it's huge. That's it's it's massive, and it's heavy. I tried to pick that thing up, I freaking pulled a muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, had to clear my throat. My uh, bad. I bet. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's a cool experience. That's almost like you have a a theater in your home. Oh, I watched free guy on it. So that's my other one. Free guy. Of course, always fun watching a Ryan Reynolds on, on screen doing Ryan Reynolds stuff. But I think that's about it. You know, not a lot for two weeks, but I definitely did some watching. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've done more than me. I think the only thing I've managed to watch in the last two weeks, I was thinking about that was a, I'm a little, I'm a couple episodes behind on Andor. I know I watched episode four because I think the last time it was recorded, only the first three were out. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. I think um, it was just the first three. Yeah. So I did watch the fourth episode and uh, I'm liking it so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, there's very little in the Star Wars universe I don't usually enjoy or find something to, to enjoy. Um, that there's things I want to watch. Like I want to sit down and want to watch the Werewolf by Night special on Disney Plus. Just haven't had a chance to yet. Um, get caught up on Andor. And uh, I'm looking forward to that Tales of the Jedi animated series. I think it comes out in a couple weeks. That, that looks, looks cool. cool. That looks cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I know it's only like six episodes, but it still looks cool. Uh, I, I got to finish some Cobra Kai. I, have, I know about halfway, but I haven't uh, watched, been able to watch any more. But, you know, I think I have an excuse as I've been very busy. <laughs> um, with, oh, you definitely with, have with an excuse. And everything. Um, but I'll, I'll try to get caught up on some things here in the next uh, week or so. And, uh, cause I haven't, uh, yeah, I mean, there's been stuff I wanted to watch. Uh, I think one night I was sitting down and, and, uh, cause I didn't have my, my TV set up yet. So I was, had the PlayStation only using your Voodoo account and I was just watching Raiders of Lost Ark just for the hell of it. Cause that's just one of my comfort movies, you know, when you add it digitally on your account. So yes, sir. I was watching that and, uh. That's about it, man. So I, I slacked. I pulled along this week. Who uh, slacks quite often and things he watches. So I, um, I, um, I blame. I blame Long, even though he's not on the show. It's just he fun. rubbed off on you. That's right. <laughs> but uh, well, let's get today's featured film then. Let's let's kick off Halloween Horrors Month here with a, uh, you know, the the first film twenty eight days later is one of my uh, favorite um, sci fi horror movies that have been made ever, and. Uh, you know, and they made this sequel to it. It's not directed by Danny Boyle. He stayed on to produce, and they brought in a different director. Maybe not as good as the first one, but there's still a lot I like in this one too. And it's it is 28 weeks later, um, which is very much it takes place 28 weeks after the first film, in which uh, the rage virus has been pretty much eradicated from Europe, or so they believe, as they're trying yeah. to round up survivors and gather him into a quarantine zone and uh essentially and then of course things being a horror movie things don't go the way they plan them to uh mm-hmm. they have a little boy who they believe might be a cure to the virus as he seems immune and uh but all hell unleashes i guess that's the best way to describe it i, I watched this movie over a few days over the last couple of weeks i'm trying to remember exactly the, the way i would describe it is two Two uh, siblings, uh, a girl and a, a boy and a girl, basically fuck up uh, the U.S. trying to go in and restart society in England by going and looking for their mother. Right. Who was infected, but has some kind of, you know, hereditary immunity to the disease. She can carry it and spread it, but she, it doesn't affect her the way it does other people. And so, of course, the, the dad comes in, he gives her a kiss, boom, he gets the virus <laughs> and he starts spreading it. And then it just infects more and more and more and just fucks everything up. You yeah. Know? So. And it becomes an, it becomes an on the run movie where the soldier played by Jeremy Renner in one of his early, really like maybe a second role as an actor yeah. is trying to protect the kids and get them out of London and get them to Wembley stadium, which is believed to be an extraction zone to get them to safety. 
And uh, but the best way to describe this movie is the first one had this sense <coughs> of a uh, of terror and dread, and everything does go wrong in the first movie. But do but Danny Boyle directs it in such a style that it the movie had a flow to it. So when things went wrong, you're kind of like it added to the heart of the film. Where yeah. this movie plays out more like an action film where everything goes wrong and it feels very convenient. It doesn't have the same intensity. Is that a good way to, to be fair to this movie? But yeah, yeah, the that's same way fair. this movie this movie is shot very well. The guy tries to emulate Boyle style. And um but the but the plot of it is so a little more all over the place. It, it, you know, a lot happens very quickly and very conveniently, and you're like, okay, and and the movie gives you all this hope and then it rips it away constantly in a way. The first one does the same thing, but the first one doesn't give you as much hope. The first one starts out in dread and it continues in dread throughout the movie. So, you know what you're watching or this one, like just every time something good seems like it's going to happen. Any hope is ripped away very quickly in this movie. And of course yeah. this movie ends on a major downer note where we find out that Europe is basically been completely taken back over by the rage virus and that's how the movie ends with the intended third sequel that never did happen um 28 was, months later yeah which is strangely danny boyle still talks about doing it even years later but i don't think he's ever going to do it at this point you know um even at though, this point we should just go ahead and say 28 decades later right so, uh, you know <laughs> yeah i mean you know boyle has become an oscar winner since 28 days later when he went for some dog millionaire and is a little more picky about his projects. And this just doesn't feel like a, a genre he might go back to. I mean, you never know, but, um, but that said though, there's a lot, there's a lot to like about 28 weeks later. I like the way it's shot. I like the way that uh, it does have, it does have an intensity to it that makes the movie very exciting despite the plot conveniences that just kind of happen. Uh, it's cool seeing Renner in an early role. Uh, Rose Byrne, she's always good in films, and uh, she's good in this one. Um, I think the movie's, to me, the movie doesn't feel as violent as the first one until the end. You know, whenever, yeah. uh, I mean, they, they find her. I was a little confused. I thought that they had killed her dad earlier in the movie. It, or at least they make it appear that he's dead. Then all of a sudden he shows back up at the end and starts biting into the kid. And then he, yeah. then he beats the hell out of their mother. After all this work to save her, it's like, wait, what? You're just like, and then the daughter comes in and shoots, shoots her dad. And it's just like, well, that's really not fair. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, like, damn it. Everything gets screwed up. Yeah. I, and we should know the opening sequence of the movie, which is uh, we, we are introduced to Robert Carlyle's character with a, with a bunch of people in a, in a, in a cabin when these kids run to the door and, uh, and the whole thing is very intense from the beginning and nothing goes right from the beginning. So the movie sets it up from there, just to uh, have nothing go right throughout the film, essentially. Yeah, they're just trying to eat dinner in their cabin and uh, they hear banging at the door and the husband's like, don't don't answer. We, there's no way we can help. And uh, the the wife's like, it's a it's a boy. It's a baby boy. Yeah, he, and so they're like, all right, fine. So dad undoes everything, lets the boy in. But I guess a bunch of uh, people infected see that he went in there and they just start busting through the walls. Grandma and grandpa die. Uh, the, you know, a bunch of other people, you know, other people in the cabin die. And uh, the husband, you know, the wife and the little kid that they took in, um, you get left behind by him because he's just trying to save himself, which I guess kind of echoes some of the themes from the first one where. Um, you know, the girl that was the lady that was traveling with uh, Cillian Murphy's character from the first one, she said that if you care about people or you, or you start helping people, then, uh, you know, it can come back to bite you. And, you know, and sometimes you just have to think about yourself. And he thinks about himself and, you know, because the people that he, you know, helps came back to bite him. And, you know, he leaves her. And uh, I could have sworn she was like ripped to shreds because that's what they do. I mean, that's, right. that's what happens when you get grabbed. I, I don't know how you uh, just survive, but, you know, it's a movie. And, uh, and he takes off in a boat and then, you know, people are writing. Uh, next thing you know, people are riding a bullet train into uh, London and they're like, yeah, we've got a we've even got a pub going on, you know. And so, you know, you got a lot of Americans there because. Hey, you know, they went, they went with what most, most, you know, movies do with a, 
a sequel. They uh, bring in Americans and a bigger budget, and that usually brings in more viewers. And, you know, he went up to 15 million on the budget this time. Um, you know, is it better than the first one? No. Um, is it bad? No. Um, it's, uh, you know, just the, the dad, you kind of despise him, I feel like, because right. he left his wife behind, you know, and yeah. kind of a shitty thing to do. And then he took off on the boat and guy like falls out of the boat. One of the guys that's with him and, uh, he's just, just, you know, screwing everybody just, you know, <laughs> screw you guys. I'm out of here. Um, and he just takes off, but it's pretty cool that, you know, it still amazes me that, you know, we, we went from like forever with, uh, you know, George A. Romero and subsequent, you know, zombie movies following from that of zombies just being really slow, lethargic. And these zombies are lacing up their Nikes, you know, and, and running after people. Um, you know, it's it's and, one and of those. Not only that, yeah. I found it interesting that these zombies die from starvation. Yeah. That, that's kind of a new element that I don't ever remember seeing in a zombie film. Maybe Romero did something like that at one point. I could be wrong on that, but I thought that was interesting, interesting concept because I don't yeah. remember that occurring in The Walking Dead or any other zombies that I've watched. Um, but this one, they actually have to eat to stay alive or feed on other humans. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's, that's crazy because most of the time, like you said, you know, you still, the z- zombies are still alive, but they, you know, maybe get more decrepit, you know, they deteriorate a little faster um it's a different element it's one of those movies where you're like man if we got an apocalypse like that we'd be screwed because it's like there's just no there's no way to react man these things these guys are flying at you um but uh yeah i feel like you know the last you know 40 50 minutes of the film is, is just really fast really fast paced um society breaks down they're on the run uh jeremy renner gets lit on fire and and shit trying to push start a uh you know a vehicle that won't that won't start and man it's uh it's pretty crazy sacrifices himself basically Mm -hmm. Um, he's he's definitely the favorite character of the movie i think yeah i um i do like this this version of zombie horror though the the speed zombies i i think it's an interesting thing when we did 28 days later i know i talked about that i uh Nothing wrong with the classic zombies, um, but I, I like the idea of zombieism being a, a virus like it is in this and causing people to kind of turn into the undead, not necessarily rising from the dead. Um, and I think that's cool. We, we see it. We saw it in World War Z as well, which is, a I think, a really cool sci- zombie sci-fi movie as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good and, one. Um, and so I, I like this idea, and I think um, that's why I like the first film quite a bit. I agree with you that this movie is... Not a bad movie. It's just not as good as the first one. It sits just under a 7.0 on IMDb, which I think is pretty fair, which is seven. Seven's a pretty high score, really, for a sequel and for a movie that was uh, not as well received by the critics as the first one. But a lot of critics did like this movie. They praised the direction. They praised the um, intensity of it and the horrifying elements of it. Um, I think where critics didn't like as much were some of the uh, messy plot points that we mentioned. Um but I think uh, they added the last scene in the film at the last minute to uh, give an idea that there could be a sequel. Originally, the movie was going to end with uh, the um, torn down helicopter. Yeah, that was it. And then there was yeah. no zombies running. Uh, so I thought that was cool. Uh, Danny Boyle said he was hands on as far as he couldn't direct the film. He did some second unit directing and helped produce the movie. Uh, so that it still has this look of the first one. Uh but for, I actually, believe it or not, I actually um, saw this in theaters. And uh, I had not seen the first one when I saw this in theaters. I, I went with, I can't remember who I went with. Interesting. So I wanted to see it. And so I went back shortly after seeing this and saw the first one. And I was like, wow, this and the first one is a, a fantastic movie. I, I like 28 Days Later a lot. Um, and this one, I enjoy this too. Uh, I... Uh, I can see where it's not as strong as the first movie, but I think it's still a really strong sequel that uh, was, was pr- it's pretty well done. And I like the fact that it opens up elements for a possible third one. If Alex Garland, the screenwriter and Danny Boyle ever get around to doing it, I think it would be a, I think it'd be cool to see one more may round out this trilogy and do the 28 months later. Um, 
you know, originally it was going to be the original idea for the sequel was 29 days later. It was just the next day after the way the first one ended, but uh, wow. they never got around doing that. And they developed the script where it was 28 weeks later. And uh, we got this movie. There was also some other elements where Rose Byrne and Jeremy Renner's uh, were swapped where Renner actually dies in the subway by uh, at the hands of Robert Carlyle and, and, and then Byrne, she saves the kids against Burn Alive instead. They actually had flip flop that in the final shooting script. Um, I don't know so if that would have uh, would have been as cool. You know, you had the woman going out pushing the car. You'd be like, "Man, Jeremy, you you know, bastard, get out there and push." <laughs> You're making the woman push. Yeah. They got shot in the leg. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how, that's how I would view it. It's cool too. I actually until I watched it this week, I forgot Jeremy Renner was in this, and it, it, it literally is like his second major movie role. I mean, there, he was not Hawkeye at this point. He had not done the Hurt Locker. The Hurt Locker came out the same year, later that year, I believe. I yeah, no right. Mission Impossible films. Yeah, you know, you know, the Hurt Locker, of course, is the uh, movie that really put him on the map. I think since it won the Oscars and everything, you know. And it got him recognition. And of course, a couple of years later, he's in the Avengers. And uh, then Tom Cruise said, come on board and let's do impossible missions with me. <laughs> yeah. Know? And uh, so it's pretty cool. And, uh, but he, he's good in this role, man. He, um, Renner plays a good military guy. You know, he did it in this and he did it in Hurt Locker. And uh, I'm sure it's probably some other movie he did that I'm not thinking of. Um, another little interesting note is the, uh, the farm at the beginning of this movie is the same farm that was used in Children of Men, which is a very good science fiction movie with a uh, what's his name escaping me. Uh, Clive Owen. I know. Clive, Clive Owen. Owen. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good science fiction movie that uh, we've talked about there before. Was, we'll have to do that. It was used before. in some other movie too. I saw. I, I not familiar yeah. with that movie, but I was like, man, they they really like using this cabin over and over and over again. Yeah, but uh. But man, 28 weeks later, though, I think is a pretty kick-ass film. Um, good sequel. Good, it's a worthy follow-up. And and I think it helped that Boyle was able to come on and do some second unit directing and producing and, and uh, made the movie have a good flow to it. Uh, not as good as the first one, but still a worthy sequel. Um, you know, I uh, it was fun to rewatch it because I had only seen it. I had, I've seen the first one several times. I've only seen this one two or three times over the years, you know, like yeah. I saw it in theaters. I think I watched it one other time. And actually, uh, when we did 28 days later, a couple of years ago, I bought it on my, the voodoo. They had it for 10 bucks for both of them. And I had not sat down and watched the sequel since I bought them, as I bought them so we could do a uh, part one. And I was like, well, now I have a reason to watch part two. Finally. And, uh, maybe we'll get a part three one day, but I, I think this is a pretty maybe solid one day. Um, you know, I kind of agree with the seven out of 10 on it on IMDb or a, B, a pretty solid B plus, you know, I think it's pretty, yeah. pretty... B I'd say it's at least a B. I think, I think it's a B for me. Um, I, I just, uh, feel like, you know, maybe we should have had Cillian Murphy come back, but I, I, you know, I don't think, uh, Hey, there's scheduling conflicts with that or something. It was him and he and Naomi Harris could not, commit to it to come back for their roles. So they dark night probably they, re, they rewrote some of the uh roles. Yeah, I guess so. I mean Dark Knight came out in two thousand eight. This was two thousand seven, so it's possible that was what he was filming or uh, but he only had a small part of the Dark Knight. Or he Red Eye. Out. Maybe he did Red Eye. Who knows? You know? Um yeah. Yeah, because Inception wasn't until after after this too. So who knows what he was doing. Naomi Harris was probably doing Skyfall at the time, James Bond, I would imagine. You know, by, around this time. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, so they rewrote the script without those characters in it and then did some stuff and it still came out to be a good film. Uh, definitely worth watching. Um, so 20 weeks later, man, a good, a good kickoff to our shortened version of Halloween horrors, 2022. Uh, what yeah. Everyone, everyone likes the, uh, everyone likes a good zombie film. Oh yeah. Yep. They do. Um, all right. Well, and speaking of zombie films and Halloween and horrors, we, uh, we started a tradition a couple of years ago with during Halloween horrors where we, uh, tell ghost stories, uh, on the show. And, uh, we've only got one this week. Next week, we're going to have two, cause I'm going to get one too. And Matt's going to get one. 
We'll have two ghost stories next week. But this week, we just have one ghost story. And it's going to come from Matt's side as he's uh, he's got a ghost story to tell us in the month of uh, October here. So uh, yeah. let's, let's scare some PP Pants City here, Matt. So whenever I was maybe, I think I was five years old. And where I'm sitting right now in my house recording... Um, I, you know, I, I used to get thirsty, you know, you get thirsty in the middle of the night, you wake up, you get something to drink. Um, that's what I was going to do. And I get up and I make my way over to the kitchen and I could have sworn I saw a cloaked figure with a top hat on like a, like maybe a fedora type hat, um, something like that. And I ignored it at first. Cause I saw it in the hallway and then I'm, you know, as I pass the counter and I, I look into the kitchen, it's moved and I ran to my parents' door and I'm banging on it. It's locked. Um, I look back and, and the figure has moved closer to the middle of the, of the kitchen. And I just ran the opposite way, ran back in the room. My cousin had stayed over. How old were you? I'm, I'm five. And so of course, oh, you know, my, yourself, man. <laughs> yeah, man, my, my parents didn't believe me. Um, and then, you know, my cousin used to stay and stay over all the time. My cousin saw the same thing. And I don't think I ever remembered telling him how he looked like. And he was able to describe him. I just said, I saw a ghost, you know, and, uh, and my sister saw the same thing. We all had seen the same thing, you know, and didn't think anything of it except for just that it happened over the years. And then, Recently, um, I saw this documentary about the hat men. And so apparently, and it, these people describe the same, seeing the same phenomenon across other countries. Uh, and, and they mainly see it in people that have, I guess their, their lives get kind of upended or something like that. They, they see it in people who have like, a lot of negative energy surrounding them. Now, some uh, people who, who research this stuff say that it's part of a sleep paralysis um, because sometimes you can wake up and people have seen these figures staying by them, uh, standing by their bedside, and they're just like frozen in terror. They can't move. Um, and, you know, they, they don't, they describe the same looking figure. There's podcasts on it, there's books. Um, and all say the same thing. I, I sent, I sent it immediately to my mom and she's just like, Whoa, you know, that, that's crazy. You know, I don't think she still, still doesn't believe, but it's like, you know, that, I think that that says something. And there's, there's many, uh, theories out there that these, these things are time travelers that, you know, they, they go from different spots and, and time or, or whatnot. And, uh, and then there's other theories that they're just beings that fo that harness, you know, are attracted to, you know, negative energy, and it's there are all kinds of theories. But the Hat Men, look it up; they're real. Uh, I've seen one. My family's seen them. It's it's kind of spooky. They look they look very very scary. All right. Um... Now that people are pooping themselves, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, that's that's crazy. I was, uh, and I'll sh I think I sent you a a screenshot of, of what something, man. I, and that's I, I, some people even describe them as having like red eyes, but that's basically uh, what I saw I've, the silhouette yeah, of. I've, I've, uh, I can safely say I've never I've heard stories people that have seen things, but I've never. Never see anything in my life, and I and I don't want to. So that's not encouraging any ghosts that might be listening to the show. Don't come spook me out now. You know? Yeah, I don't want to see that kind of stuff. Sometimes you talk about it, it, it attracts that side yeah, of the no, universe too. Stay away, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to see no crazy ass shit. Use uh, Wyatt's uh, proton blaster. <laughs> <laughs> Zap him. He, he would probably uh, probably try to do that himself. <laughs> so, uh yeah so good stuff man uh next week i will look something up and we'll bring a couple of good ghost stories to the table next week on the show oh yeah oh yeah and, uh, have to yeah 
I was even thinking, man, we're, we're recording on Saturday. I, I, you know, I, I was thinking download this. I, I am going to try to go see Black Adam next Saturday. Um, so we'll see. Maybe we'll record Saturday again so I can give Black Adam report. We'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah. That's another week away. Well, let's do a little bit of news. There's not a whole lot going on, but uh, but we'll talk about it. There's a couple of trailers came out this week. We got a new, uh, we got a new trailer for Black Panther, uh, Wakanda Forever. Um, looks pretty exciting. We got to see our first look at Ironheart. Uh, we got our first look at the new Black Panther in suit. Uh, it's pretty, I think, fairly obvious that it's a female. I think yeah. that's safe to say. Um, Easily, my guess is probably Shuri. I mean, you know, let's just be honest here. Uh, but most exciting is um, just na- seeing Namor on screen is pretty cool. You know, it's one of those early Marvel superheroes that uh, has been around for a long time. And we're finally going to get his big screen debut. And, uh, and you know, we all know that Namor starts out as a villain, but eventually, you know, kind of ends up being a, a friend of things, too, as, as a... Yep. I, I hope the... <sighs> Yeah, I really hope the rumors are true that Dr. Doom appears at the end of this film and we'll see, you know, and sets up the future of the Marvel universe. I mean, we know Kang is coming too. He's, we already know he's in Ant-Man three and, and um, things like that. And everyone expects the Ant-Man trailer to be out here in the next couple of weeks as it'll likely debut in theaters in front of um, Black Panther, you know? Uh, so we know it's all coming because uh, phase two, let's be honest, has been a little bit of, no way home was was fun, but overall, phase two's been a bit weak. It's time to uh, let's bring it, Marvel. Let's see what we're doing next after Thanos. It's time to get the ball rolling on this. Exactly. Um, you know, exciting news with Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine, but then also some other news like Blade. The Blade has been pushed back a year now as they lost its director. I hope they don't lose Masharla. I'm probably saying his name wrong, Masharla Ali, because I think he's going to be a really good Blade. Hopefully, he sticks with the project and. Uh, they push that back and it caused some of the other movies to shuffle around. Um, it just seems like Marvel is struggling a little bit with phase two and getting things off the ground and getting things made while the uh, TV shows keep going strong. Um, it seems even though I've heard, I, I, I just couldn't keep up with She-Hulk. I didn't like it enough, but I've heard the finale was really bizarre and weird. And, and, uh, but it just seems that the theaters there that, you know, Thor was okay. Uh, I like Dr. Strange more, you know, it was, it was pretty decent. Um, Hopefully, yeah, you know, hopefully Black Panther and Ant Man three get the ball rolling on Phase five, whatever phase we're in now, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and um, and we get we get some good films, and I think Black Panther will be great, man. Ryan Coogler, you know he he uh, he has been a hell of a director since he came on the scene with with Creed and Black Panther and Fruitville Station. He's done some really good films, and uh, it's glad to see him back because you know he he said he considered retiring after Chadwick Boseman's death that he wasn't. Sure, if he could do another film, and uh, and that's how strongly it, it hit him—the death of Chadwick Boseman. So, uh, um, looking forward to seeing what he does with Black Panther too. Uh, and speaking of um, deaths, of course, you know William Hurt passed away a few months ago. And he played Thunderbolt Ross, General Thunderbolt Ross in the Marvel Universe. And uh, yeah. rumor is that Harrison Ford may be taking on that role, which I think is pretty perfect. Yeah, I, 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 you know. Uh, I don't understand why people were making a big deal about they couldn't recast Chadwick, but they can recast Hurt just five months later. Well, it's a different style role. What Chadwick did was a big, big role, a big, important role. Where Thunderbolt Ross is more of a supporting character, unless they ever go the route of him turning into Red Hulk and stuff, which you know who knows if they'll do that one day. But I, yeah. uh, but I, I, I like this. I like that if Harrison Ford does sign on, I think he'll be a good, a good general Thunderbolt Ross. I do believe so. And uh, second. Uh, trailer that came out this week and was, which caused a ruckus with people was the first trailer for the super mario brothers movie and uh i don't people knocking chris pratt and his voice i i'm fine with it you know i i don't whatever i mean i think the movie looks really cool i was kind of excited for the trailer um, yeah i guess voice acting doesn't bother me that much i mean you know we had very little i mean mario's voice is in the in the games and stuff but really how much reference do we really have? Does, I mean, I guess they're making a big deal because he doesn't sound Italian. Um, so, oh, or that he's not Italian. Which yeah, I, yeah, that's like I, I like how you know Bill when Bill Burr was talking about uh, that movie with Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart, where he's a quadriplegic 
yeah. and people were, were pissed because they didn't hire an actual quadriplegic. Oh, and he's like, he's like, look, it's called acting. He's right. like, <laughs> he's like, your job is to be something you're not, you know? Exactly. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, uh, you know, Hispanic, you know, and, right. and, you know, Hispanics are kin to Italians and, uh, you know, I, I have no problem with, you know, there's so many white people being cast as, right. you know, Hispanics I and mean, it's, it's acting, man, you know, yeah. Re- I mean, don't get me wrong. Represent- representation, diversity does matter, it, yeah. but it it's a role it's acting. Um, you know, it's, you can't hit it on the nail every time. Uh, you know, it's okay to play different parts and, and let people play parts. And I think it's, we're getting to the point where like everything doesn't have to be exactly what woke culture wants it to be all the time. Uh, you know, it's just like, yeah. uh, stop giving in basically, you know, until everyone. Um, yeah. None of those guys are plumbers either. And they're, yeah, and they're exactly. voicing plumbers. You know? I'm sure they hire a real Italian plumber to play Mario's voice. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's a fucking video game character. It's made up, you know, Nintendo of America was very tight with their license. They, they, every step of the way with this film being made by universal Illuminati that uh, if Nintendo signed off on it, then they're obviously okay with it. Um, oh so yeah. It, it's fine. I it could have been their choice too. Like yeah, Nintendo exactly. could have said, we want Chris Pratt, yeah. you know? And, they, and this is why I think Nintendo stays away from licensing their characters because they know that the fan bases and people are so, are just over, I don't know, they, they, they do this kind of shit. They, they cause yeah. issues. I mean, you know, can you imagine like, imagine Nintendo trying to make a Zelda film. Yeah. It would get eaten alive by the fan base as far as yeah. casting, you know? So, um, but I'm looking forward to Mario. So, you know, whatever, I'll go enjoy it with my kids. You know? Yeah. It'll be, Every, a movie. it's going to be a good movie. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, that's all the news I had. It wasn't, a, you know, strangely, even though we hadn't done a show in two weeks, I was looking through the news and it was. Oh, a, um, I do have something oh, just, just weeks. yesterday. Uh, we lost Ted white, which if you don't know who Ted white is. Um, he was John Wayne's stunt man. Yeah. All right. That's how, that's how old this man was. He was born in, in 1926. All right. He so he was an old shit. dude, but you know, he, uh, he was a stunt man for, uh, the final Friday. Friday the 13th chapter four. Yeah. Um, so with, you know, it being Halloween horrors month and, you know, we do, you know, talk slashers here sometimes, uh, rip to the, the great stuntman Ted white, who not only, uh, you know, portrayed, then, you know, t- John Wayne that? at times, but Jason Voorhees. And then, uh, Ro- Robert, Robbie Coltrane, who played Haggard in the Harry Potter films passed away this week. And, uh, yeah. you know, he, um, he had something, I read a nice quote from him where I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, you know, I, I made the films for my children and for their grandchildren and for future generations. They'll always have Harry Potter to watch. And he says, and to me, that's an important legacy. Um, and that I'm like I said, I'm kind of paraphrasing that, but I thought that was a good quote from him. Yeah. And he was very proud of Haggard and what he did with those films. And uh, I'm not a huge Harry Potter guy. I, I enjoy him for what they are, but I do like his role in those movies. I did think he was very good as Haggard. So, yeah, he was like a big, like a big brother to Harry, you know, yeah. so. or an uncle, you know, because mm-hmm. he didn't have family, so he had to depend on those teachers there. Yeah, and then uh, who was it? Uh, Angela Lansbury from Murder She Wrote. Yeah, so passed away this week, yeah. and uh, not to be rude, but I didn't realize she was still alive <laughs> <laughs> until I, I, you know, she was old when I was little, Matt, and. You know, so I was like, oh, okay, she passed away. I thought she had passed away a long time ago. But uh, another another classic TV screen actor uh, left this week. So a few deaths. But uh, anyway, well, let's preview next week's episode of Halloween Horrors. Um, we're going to stick with the zombie genre. I mean, we're going to go to an all-time classic that uh, is the reason we have zombie horror initially. And not only zombie horror, but this director influenced... Uh, Many of the greats, from John Carpenter to, um, I would argue, uh, what's the guy who makes the weird um, movies that just had the sex science movie? Uh, and uh, oh, the guy who did Eastern Promises and Existence always makes really weird movies. Yeah, uh, you're not talking about Peel, are you, Jordan? No, no. no. Well, I'm sure you, uh, 
influenced Jordan Peele as well. Um, and what is that guy in his name? He's, let me look this up. Guillermo del Toro, definitely influenced by... Oh, um, yeah, for sure. David Cronenberg made The Fly. Oh, Cronenberg. You know, all these yeah. great hard directors. Um, so we're going to talk George Romero's original 1953, I believe, maybe 54, Night of the Living Dead. Night of total terror. <laughs> Night of the living dead, the dead who live on living flesh, the dead whose haunted souls hunt the living, the living whose bodies are the only food for these ungodly creatures. adventure in fear, an experience in shock more shattering than your strangest nightmare, night of the living dead, a night with the dead who cannot die, a night of total terror. Night of the Living Dead. This movie, man, scared the shit out of people when it came out. We watch it now, we're probably like, oh, this is this weak sauce. But man, in 1953, you gotta remember the mindset, okay? You have the Cold War, you have the, the Red Scare, uh people are coming off of World War Three and think or not World War Three, <laughs> World War Two. And, and the country is in this place where they go to the movies to escape, you know, and uh, and and they believed some of the stuff on screen. Man, people had a little bit different trouble separating reality back then from 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 the movie screen. And yeah. there are people that went into this theater and would walk out of it seeing the original Night of Living Dead because it scared the shit out because they didn't know if it was real or not. Um, so it's an all time classic that that changed the game as far as horror on the big screen. And we're going to talk uh, Night of the Living Dead next week. And we're also going to uh, next week. We will have this month in pop culture history on next week's show. So I hope Matt, you bring us some scary pop culture stuff next week on the show. You and, know a couple it. More, and a couple more ghost stories for you uh, on next week's episode. But uh, it's good to be back after a week's break. And we, we thank you for listening. The rebel radio podcast.com is um, where you can find all your rebel radio needs. We're on all the apps, iTunes, uh, there is no more Google Play anymore. I always forget that. But iHeartRadio, Spotify, you can find us on all that good stuff. And uh, as always, man, we appreciate you listening. And uh, until next week, this has been Mark. This has been Matt. Remember, as always, just go there. And go there and do it. Go there and do it.